Please speak loud. <coughs> this is my co-chair, yeah. Anna hello. Russ. Yes, yeah. yes. Hello. Good morning, everybody. We don't have a microphone. But, uh, so welcome, everybody. And we will start our presentation <coughs> today with uh, so our first speaker. Let me introduce you, Konstantin Krasovsky, uh, tobacco control expert from Ukraine. And he's going to um, tell us about the results of the tobacco tax taxation policy in Ukraine. Yes, thank you. How change policy? In 2015, first we increase tax for non-filter cigarettes to the level filter cigarettes and introduce its very specific additional uh, ad valorem 5% uh, excise paid to local budget. And then for the three years I'm going to discuss, uh, first year the excise increase was 40% specific and also the ad valorem excise also increased in 2017 also 40% and in 2018, almost 30%. And for the uh, next uh, seven years, uh, the parliament voted uh, that each year a uh, specific rate would increase by 20%, but already in 2015, it's also increased even more by 9% for to keep with inflation. So not many European countries uh, can have uh, had such steep increase of taxes, and we can see the result. And uh, the main point of my presentation is that the tobacco industry also well aware about this graph. And they definitely try to distort uh, the result of tobacco taxation policy, and uh, even maybe to stop it, or maybe even reverse. It back. So, but what we have? The, uh, here's the results. It's what uh, first. What's happened with uh, tax rates? You see, it's, we have increased uh, 2.5 times as well. So we have also increase in revenue. It's also good. But for sales, first year we have increase of taxes and increase in sales and increase in number of smokers. Something wrong. Then it's, but eventually, the result is win-win policy. However, there are, uh, when we have careful analysis of what's actually happened, uh, we see that it's how tobacco industry tried to undermine tobacco taxation policy. And we start with revenue. Why? Because the data on revenues are readily available, at least for the government and tobacco industry. It's for, it's for smoking prevalence, we need surveys, some other details for revenues very exact figures available every month. And I made the quarterly result. So you see, it's uh, in 2016, taxes increased by 40%, but revenue increases you know, rather small, something like 10%. Eventually, they increase even uh, during the year. Next, 40% increase, no increase in revenue. 2018, increased 30%, huge decline on the revenue for the first quarter. And then, till the end of the year, uh, in the fourth quarter, revenue was almost the same as during the first six months. Um, how it's possible? The usual explanation of tobacco industry of such declining revenue is smuggling. Of course, you see, it's what, of course, that's why it's increased. But it was not smart. And uh, <coughs> we can say data on sales. And for sales, we have three indicators. One indicator is pink. It's data on cigarette market from Philip Morris quarterly reports. And you can see every year the results are the same. Market is high in the middle of the year and lower in the first and fourth quarters. And according to Philip Morris data, the annual sales decreased about, by about uh, 7 uh, billion uh, cigarettes each year. But uh, we also have uh, data on cigarette sales reported to Ukrainian tax authorities. <coughs> And this is yellow one. And now the picture is totally different. The highest sales 
are in the fourth quarter, especially in the second half of the year, and very low. The, and also be, uh, in Ukraine, tax are paid uh, before the cigarettes are sold. Uh, tax are paid when tobacco uh, producers or importers buy excise stamps in advance, a little bit. And this is this uh, gray bar, and we see that in the first part of the year, they buy more excise stamps than sell cigarettes, and the situation is changed in the second. So they buy it beforehand. And so this graphs how many cigarette stamps they bought. And it's explained why we have decrease in revenues. And also important, the difference between estimating of annual market. According to data reported to the government, uh, sales decreased by tens billion cigarettes each year, not by seven. Actually, you see, the difference between this figure and this figure is almost the same. So, and we can suggest that uh, cigarette sales were reported in this year, but they generally moved, and actually, this figure is higher. And for tax stamps, you see, the figures are similar to this, but also a little higher. So, they buy excise stamps in advance, pay revenues beforehand, but actually, the real sales in 2016 were much lower, and until they were much higher than reported to authorities. And what they also did with prices. On these graphs, I just uh, compare CPI, Consumer Price Index, for tobacco products and inflation. So it's the difference, how they increase their prices. Of course, if they increase cigarette prices just in line with infl inflation, yes, it's okay. Uh, but uh, the, the policy was absolutely different. You see, when excise were increased, we actually have very low increase in prices. Actually, we could expect, oh, excise increased by 40%, which would be huge increase in prices, and then they would say no. They didn't increase after, but in the middle of the year, each year, May, June, July, August, May, June, July, August, they increased prices much higher than the inflation. So what they did, uh, they know that uh, smokers can react on a uh, sharp increase of prices. But if it increases little by little every month, or say, oh, it's general inflation, so if they, smokers don't. So they do not increase prices just after uh, uh, excise increase. They made it very slow to prevent smoker from quitting. But also, what's important, they did not increase prices in October, November each year. Why? Because during these months, uh, taxation law is discussed in the parliament. So they just make an impression that, oh, it's, it's not increased prices, so maybe uh, uh, taxes should not increase as much as tobacco control advocates want. And also, uh, with our pricing policy, we uh, think what uh, the tax share in Ukraine is uh, national excise, local excise, and VAT. So, and uh, all of you heard about this uh, tax share should be 70 or 75 percent. Who knows which lever is right one, 70 or 75? Neither. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yes, and that's why. So, you see, in the 2016, we increase taxes of the beginning was uh, more than 80 percent but each month tobacco industry increased its part of the price and in june it's below 75 and in the end of the year it's below 70 percent and the same situation was the same in june it was below 70 every year so eventually it's you know, so this tax share is defined not by taxation policy, but by tobacco industry pricing policy. You can reach 70 or 75 percent only if tobacco industry wishes.
And also, uh, we see the result of what's happened with uh, sm uh, smoking prevalence uh, in different income groups. For the poorest group, red lines, you see it's with all here we have declined. But after, in 2016, you see it's, it was some price war, the cigarettes became more affordable, and we have some increase in affordability more, more to them. But eventually, tobacco taxation works because we have the lowest smoking prevalence among <laughs> less of them. So, what, uh, in conclusion, in long term, tobacco excise increases which reduce tobacco affordability have expected win win ex uh, impact, its revenue increase and consumption decline. But in short term, tobacco industry use sophisticated tactics to distort the results. It's used forest telling and pricing policy. It's price war, price overseeking, slow price increase during the whole year. Forest telling, you see, it's definition of uh, uh, forest telling from the guidelines of articles, FCTC Article 6. And, of course, the obvious aim is to reduce total tax payments. They pay it before. But actually, the hidden aim of forest telling it's uh, to present that uh, how it was done in this graph. You see, it's this is forest telling. They paid much more, reported it, and they didn't need uh, cigarettes because they have a lot of cigarettes in stocks, and they didn't tax it. And uh, they, we expect they say, oh, it's declining revenue. We cannot increase taxes anymore. It's too high. It's, we have huge smuggling. But we made a press conference and presented this is forest and we present all this monitoring monthly data to show that it was the, so they didn't say this and uh, hopefully we have this uh, result. So it's uh, how to fight foreign telling. It's excise secrets for cigarettes in stocks and monitoring sex and land. And for uh, pricing policy. Industry avoids sharp price changes after the plant tax hikes, increases prices slowly during the whole level, as smokers more sensitive to shutdown. In some cases, industry can decrease prices, its price cost price war, with specific political aims, introduction minimum price change, excise structure, the lack of tax increases. And why they can do it? Industry can manipulate prices because they have the right to determine maximum retail selling prices. Cigarettes are the only product in the European country for which maximum retail price is applied according to the legislation. So, how to counteract? We need to take away the right to determine prices from the tobacco industry. Each every athlete should be able to set market prices cigarettes. I expect it would be more expensive, and it would be no, uh, it would not be deprived by tobacco industry prices policy, and it also would be good for public health. Thank you.